Right, so where are we going then? We're going to Tynham Village, but we haven't brought the, the Mrs Satnag, have we? I just realised. No, realize. no, but I assume it's right out at the bottom of the road because this is Tynham Road. Right, which way do we come we in? Go right. Go right here, the way. Can't see a thing here. Yeah, OK, there's nobody right. this way. Oh, this is Church Knoll then. So there is some something else up here. So we've all, have we already been up here? We haven't, have we? No, no, no. That was the sign we were looking for. Okay. Church Knoll. And that must be the church. Yeah. Of Church Knoll. Villages are delightful, aren't they? They are, yeah. Quite narrow, though, aren't they? Yeah. Designed for the donkey rather than the car. Nice looking pub, though. Where are we going now? Oh, I think we go right here. Oh, grief, look at this. There's a viewing point, viewing up, point there. up there. Viewing point up there, we can go up there. Oh, I've obviously gone the wrong way anyway. Yeah, we should have gone left there. Tyne them via the army ranges. There we go. No one coming down there, is it? Let's see. see, really. Yeah. Beautiful as it is, Dorset, the hedges are a pain in the what's it when you're driving. Yeah. Especially in a low car. So this would, when they're doing the training, this would all be closed, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, tight. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're on military area here, aren't we? So. In 300 yards, turn left. Is now it, turn left. So here then. See if it's down here. Yeah. Yeah. Because normally be a gate. Single track Single road. Single track road. Clo we closed at nine o'clock. That tells you the risk of firing. Yeah. I think it's only, this road's only open at weekends, as far as I can see, while yeah. we're here. Yeah. I mean, it, there's a calendar, if you go on the Tynham website, there's a calendar there that shows you when, when it's open. Yeah, no, we wanted to see this, because we've seen a lot of sort of videos about it since it was mentioned by one of our viewers. Well, a few of our viewers yeah, mentioned it. Yeah, people have mentioned and it. Don't see the... Yeah, there's... When I looked on YouTube, I think there were about 15 videos all about it. Yeah. So the reason I like to show you the journey when you're going somewhere is because... Oh, blind it. Great little pothole there. Is that you, you know, a lot of videos start at the place, you know, they're, they're talking about. Mm. And you've no idea how easy or difficult it is to get to it. Yeah. I don't think you'd be coming here in the van, in would you? Yards, no. You oh my goodness. Oh. Now this is something you don't see on other YouTube videos. There's What's a car that? park and there are hundreds of cars in there. If you will see in a minute. Literally hundreds. You have reached your destination. The ones we've watched is <laughs> people wandering around on their own with sort of one or two people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody taking a picture. Yeah. Oh. Suppose we should have come a bit earlier. Couldn't wake up this morning. Where should we go? Further on? Oh, there will seem to be go. There's lots of space in that field. Oh, right. Or you could go there. Here we are. So they don't want cars driving in here. What's that say? Tall Barrow Bay toilets, 
church, school, something or other. That bay is the other way where a lot of people seem to be going. So that's quite an old sign, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. The old um, telephone box sign. Yeah. Telegrams may be telephoned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got a got your first public telephone kiosk during winter of 1929. And they had to keep in touch before that by telegram. It was evacuated during the Second World War and for the next 40 years the abandoned kiosk left to its fate. It was restored in 1983 with incorrect K1 roof decoration as part of a massive clear up. Mark 1, the K1 Mark 236 you see today is a replacement bought by the film company. 2012, 83 years since the K1 was first erected on this site, the kiosk has had a complete makeover uh, with the help of an ex-GPO engineer, Ian Jolly. Time K1 now boasts authentic fittings and wartime notices and looks much like it did when the last villager left in 19th of December 1943. Come on, Yeah, the A and B buttons. Kimmeridge 221. And how to call a number. If I'm on war work, you must excuse me, be brief. <laughs> well, because they wouldn't send them on a standard design, so until no, later. No, that's right. They didn't standardise the design until obviously the ones that we know and recognise these days. Yeah. Oh, I never worked on one of those. No. <laughs> dad picture. might have, yeah, I've done. Yeah. Dad might have recognised them. Your dad? Yeah. Your dad certainly would have recognised yeah. them. Should we go yes. in the first house? Yeah. Fireplace. Yeah, oh, great in the fireplace. Yeah. Got a wooden, I presume that was a stove of some sort. All the plaster's gone, isn't it? That, that hole up there with a the little... I don't know. A safe or something. I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? A little yeah, cubby hole, safety box. Have a look what the... Excuse me, pups. Have a look what the... This was the shepherd's, was shepherd's cottage. cottage. Okay. This is one we have seen on YouTube. Yeah. Shepherd Lucas seated on the end with his dog, Sam. So I've got pictures of my granddad. What are your granddad looking? Looking like that, with yeah. um, a horse and uh, the hay. Yeah. And he lived at Wheat instead. And shearing the sheep. Haven't got that. No. Well, they didn't really do sheep, did they? No, no. And mainly arable, wasn't it? Yep. He used to look after the horses. Yeah. And we've got the whole household there. Yeah, 1901 census. That's what's so brilliant about that. They can yeah. look people up like that. Yeah. They all seem to have similar names, you know, like George, Charles, Ellen, Alice, Jane, Fred. Jane, yeah. Yeah. Looks like the father, the husband. Oh, yeah, he's at the top there, James William. And they <laughs> haven't got a son named after him, which no. is what <laughs> normally happens. That's, uh, that confuses you on ancestry, doesn't it? Yeah. This is the post office box, is it? Well, that way it does look <laughs> suspiciously <laughs> like a post box. It does, doesn't it? Doesn't it? You should open the, it at the bottom. You've got the letter slot, and you've yeah. got the where you pick up the letters. Yeah. Obviously, what's missing is the front of it. Yeah. Wow. Obviously, had the fireplace there. Presuming that was the outhouse. Nothing else in there at the moment. Yeah, so um, it's number three in the row, post office, home of the Driscoll family, 1938 to 1943. So obviously they weren't here all the time, were they? No, no. That's the thing, I suppose, with the post offices, and they allocated a post office. They took over when Mrs. Pittman retired, general stores became a post office as well. Hardly big enough with parcels waiting to be delivered, bags of flour stopped, stacked up on the floor. Business was brisk. 
Joan Driscoll delivering the mail, age 16. In the post office garden. And That's post... these, these two people here. Yeah. Peter and, Joe, and Colin. Yeah. Came back in 1982. Oh, right. I like the sidecar. Yeah. And the dog. Yeah. Do you want to have a look in the, what's left of the garden? <laughs> That would have been their garden. Huh. There's a classic um, YouTube uh, video yeah. based around Wheatonstead with the postman. Yeah. Set, set about this time, 1940s, oh, right. and okay. he's collecting all the mail in the You'll post. You'll have to find office. that now. Steps there. A bit dark in there. I don't know what that is? Well, a storeroom or something? <laughs> yeah. Right, so this is the labourer's cottage, home of the Whitlock family. Ernest and Evelyn Whitlock. Main paving slabs outside the labourer's cottage. We are the group on the <laughs> Sitting on the wheel of a Fordson. <laughs> Definitely pays to come early, doesn't it? Yeah. Little church up there. So this is a schoolhouse. Uh, obviously, Mrs. Fry and her pupils, Mrs. Pritchard and her pupils. Mm. Huh. Schoolmistress. Doesn't really say what the, what we got in here, does it? The mining town of Oxbow, Saskatchewan. So Annie went, obviously went to Saskatchewan. So it says the school was closed by the Board of Education owing to the small number of scholars and the frequent need for, I don't read what that says, schooling, doesn't it? Scholaring. Don't know what the oven's about there. Yeah, looks like it's been used recently. What's up there? <laughs> Don't know what it is, so I thought I'd have a look. There's more around here. It's a very small village, wasn't it? I didn't. I thought there was another school apart from that. That's yeah. Because um, it's here, I think. Oh, is this the? Oh, this it must is be the, school. the other school. Yeah. I thought it's just where the head teacher or someone lived. Yeah, I know. They, they said it closed because of a small number of pupils, didn't they? Well, this one's got solar panels on it, so and a wind turbine. Oh. That's not exactly abandoned, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's more around here. I'll have to have a look around the church. Might be, might be, might be having services today, aren't we? There's a tiny school. Oh, there's an exhibition here. Yeah, so there's an exhibition school. School exhibition here. One of the many small isolated Dorset villages relying on farming and fishing for its livelihood. The local children between 5 and 14 were taught in the school. Today villagers and children have gone, moved out by the army in 19, December 1943. Prior to the era being used for D-Day preparations and later as a gunnery range, 
Only the empty buildings remain, trapped in a time warp. To protect the area from many of the modern developments that elsewhere have changed the face of the countryside. So a schoolroom display highlights the wealth of wildlife that can still be seen in around Tyne and much of it familiar to pupils of the pre-war era. Emphasise this continuity to the old schoolroom of the 20s has been faithfully recreated, enabling you to step back in time. The children are out at play, the nature of study books have been left open and Mrs Pritchard, the schoolmistress, invites you to look at their work. Yeah, so there's a bit of a timeline going on here. 1928. Uh, school room. That's how they found it in 1976. Yeah, abandoned in 76, rescued in 82. Well, the school attendance was not compulsory until 1888. 1880, no. rather. That's right, yeah. We've got these coat. Hey? We've got these names on the pegs. Oh, yeah, look at that. We've got quaking grass, little, um, huh, little nicknames. Yeah. And the different types of shellfish that are gathered. Oh, wow. And the school books open. Books up there. Thanks, Pops. Oh. You know, I think when I was a kid, we had desks like this. They the definitely ink. had the ink wells. We definitely had the ink wells, yeah. about different types of sheep. Encyclopedia. The children's encyclopedia. school books. Little verses for little people. Yeah. It's obviously a teacher's desk, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nature study. <laughs> that's what they were, obviously this project was all about, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, these, are, these are real or? Mm. Home of the Biles family, 1910 to 1914. So they, obviously they left then. Factory uh, cottages, very ancient building. It's all the west side of the yard. Remember them as separate cottages, often lent or lent to some of visitors. Sorry, it's, Summer lets then. <laughs> yeah. You can see the two front doors, can't you? They yeah. Are yeah. Right. Unsafe building, so they've obviously fenced it off now. Yeah.
And it was propped up anyway, this building, wasn't it? So. Church is, um, yeah, it's still used. Still used. Yeah, because they had all the times of the church there. Oh, there's more. More of it. I'm quite surprised how much there is of this. Again, this is unsafe. More over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the laundry cottages, census of 1888, 1890. And theirs was the pleasantest vi position in the village, warm and sheltered, close to the church and street, but not too crowded by neighbours. All these sort of memories here, aren't they? Yeah, people, people, yeah. Mother died in 1917. She was only 52. She was simply worn out with work, worry and grief for her lost children. And em Emily's son, yeah. sons, William, Arthur and Bert. So she lost three sons. Mm. Father was a solitary man. There was nothing you liked better than go out in the woods rather than having to endure the endless banter and babbling of human beings. <laughs> <laughs> Poppy's enjoying all the smells and sniffs around here. What have we got here then? So these are the Guile cottages. It's a home of the Wellman family to 1936 and home of the Grant family to 1942. Is that 42? 42? Yeah, 42. Yeah, so looking at the back of them again, we can't get in them. Presumably they're unsafe. There's some great sort of things here. The Wellman sisters attend the first church service held in Tynham Church for 36 years. There's Arthur, age seven, with his new bike. It was like an outhouse building here, wasn't there? So these are all terraced cottages, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, you could see why they'd love this place. I oh, know, and this would be their back garden. Yeah. Lovely. Imagine these trees were sort of a lot smaller. Go on, come on. Yeah, but obviously you probably have grass and gardens around here, wouldn't you? Yeah. So I'm trying to think here, 43 to 2021. What's that? That's 70, 77 years, 78 years? Yeah, it was 77 years to D-Day, wasn't it? So this is 78 yeah. years. Yeah. It was, I think it was the 19th of December, 1943, when they left here. Yeah. I don't know if I've actually said about the, the story of the village here. It was on military ground and uh, during the war and it got to 1943 and the, they all got a letter, didn't they, saying yeah, they had got to a, leave. Got a letter about 19th of November and they'd all got to leave to help the war so effort. They had about 28 days to pack up everything, leave the homes that some of them have been here for, the families have been here for centuries. Yeah and go, well, I think a lot of them went to local villages, some went abroad. That's why I sort of relate it to Wheatonstead, because I sort of yeah. think that if they'd all been told to, live, to yeah. leave there, because I've got yeah. family traced back, as far as I could go, 1750, yeah. all living around the common there. Yeah. And if they'd all been told to, to leave. Yeah. And of course, so, the, the promise was that they'd be able to come back after the war. Yeah, but the military have continued to want this area for... Yeah. Exercises, etc. Yeah. The Cold War started, didn't it? Yeah. Directly yeah. after the war, and that's yeah. why they didn't yeah. allow them back. Yeah. <sighs> so, defence of the country and all that. I suppose they were doing. They felt they were doing their duty by, by yeah. leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what they said to the letter in them. You know, you're helping yeah. the war effort yeah. by doing this. I think they moved. A lot of them moved to Colf Castle, Weymouth, yeah. Wareham. We've obviously a standpoint here. Yeah. Oh. Has it been where the drain was? 
there. Yeah, yeah. There's a motorhome service point. <laughs> oh no, it's no. a video, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, so peaceful here, well, obviously, apart from hundreds of people wandering about. Well, this area is peaceful. <laughs> yeah. Watch that tree stump there. Yeah, it's well worth a visit, but possibly come in, in the autumn when it'll be a bit quieter. I haven't really been able to spend much time... I've got to watch these stones here. Yeah, <laughs> all over. I've <laughs> been able to spend much time looking at the signs because obviously you've got other people who want to see them, but it's definitely worth a visit here. Just so if only to see really what some of the buildings were like. Just a pity there's not more fixtures and fittings left. You've just got the walls really, I guess. A little stream here. That's probably why you've got laundry cottages at the end, is it? This Possibly. Of water. Well, you've got a source of water, haven't you? Yeah. A pond of some sort. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video... We're not going to the church, then? <laughs> we haven't been, looked at the church. Are we not? No. All oh, right. Let's go up to the church. Yeah, got another well up here. Let's go in the church. Tynum Church. Yeah. They pinned a note to the door here. That's right. We may have given up our homes, but where many of us have lived for generations to help the war, to keep men free, we will return one day and thank you for treating the village kindly. So in 1945, with the Cold War looming, the newly elected government decided to retain the valley and the villagers could not return. The area plays a key role in the training of the British armed forces, as important now as ever in the light of recent conflicts and acts of terrorism. During the, te the telling of the story of the everyday lives of the villagers during the first half of the last century, the church exhibition serves as a memorial to their sacrifice. The family names are displayed in the frieze of tiles around the church and the photographs down from the oak panelled walls. And Tynham House as well. Yeah, the video I saw said a lot of the people in the village worked there. So yeah, worked the at house. the Tynham yeah. House. Yeah. Okay. Owned by the Bond, Bond family, family, I think it yeah. was. So what's happened to the Tynham house then? It's, you can't get to it, but no. it's still, somebody managed to take a picture of it through the trees. Yeah. But yeah. Obviously there's not a Was lot it abandoned there. as well? Yeah. 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 Well, I suppose the same fate happened to that as well. Yeah. It's a beautiful uh, window there. Can I take a picture of that? Some of the First World War pictures. They're all descriptions of the schedule of condition in 1908. All the cottages and it's a right. yeah, landlord's summary. From 3000 BC, Stone Age burial mounds are built on Povington Heath. Stonehenge is built. <laughs> it speeds up a little bit. Vikings and Danes invade. William Conqueror. Henry VIII, we were talking about the other day. Henry VIII. <laughs> and all the way down to 1800, that Battle of Trafalgar and Waterloo. <laughs> On here, Queen Victoria dies. 
World War I. They lost 17 men from the small parish town, a uh, small parish of Tynham, come steeple. World War II, the Blitz, and then the evacuation, Korean War, coronation. Power cuts lead to the three-day three week, the first Gulf War. And today, whether you watch with the army's continuing presence or not, Tynan Valley is a scopely unsightly tourist, tourism development, only too prominent along the adjacent uh, coastline, untouched by modern intensive farming practices, haven for wildlife. The cows. Oh, yeah, it says here that they had a, an auction for the cows and heifers and all the horse and mechanically drawn implements, Thursday the 9th of December 1943. Cyril Barnes on one of the first tractors in the Tynan village. So this is the gardener's cottage, home of the Gould family. And there were Head gardener, Jim Curtis. He wants to come home. 1943 committee. John Gould was born at Tyne and 60 years ago. He wants to come home. And that's the sad thing about all of this, isn't it? Yeah. And it's all very well, the village being frozen in time, but these, this was people's homes. Mm. He wrote a letter to Harold Wilson there. Yeah. 1973, the Nugent report recommended the release of all 7,200 acres of the army at land at Lulworth. Campaigners were jubilant, but the area, with the area's economy like to suffer, many locals were furious, and a keep the army in perfect committee was formed. Oh, no. Yeah. <sighs> There's two sides to the story, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah. So-called abandoned village. I don't think I've <laughs> ever seen any so so many people, people in an uh, abandoned, abandoned village. village. No, no. But uh, if you did enjoy it, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, and we'll catch up with you in the next one. <laughs>